Good morning. It's great to all come together this morning uh, for this service. We haven't had one of these for a little while, have we? We, uh, we wanted to last year, but we couldn't. Um, and so we're, we're having this great service of, of installation and blessing of staff um, for our school, but also to gather together as God's family and to, uh, to praise him for a little while and to come together uh, to pray to God, to receive his blessings. Uh, so may that happen for you today. May you receive his blessings. May you experience the presence of God as we come together as his children to receive him. We're going to sing our first song. Uh, I'm going to begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to sing our first song, Blessed Assurance. Let's pray. In all our doubts, dangers and confusion, teach us, Lord, what we ought to say and do. Give to us, who can do nothing good without you, the power to speak the truth and do your will. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As we come together as God's children, we're going to. This is a time of confession. Um, just the words will be a little bit different. So, Heavenly, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, 
We know that we have not lived the way you want for us, but we know that you love us and want to restore us. We lay our sins down at the foot of the cross and ask that you forgive us. Help us to live victorious and God-pleasing lives and grow in us a desire to do your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Isn't it great that we have the opportunity to bring all our failings, uh, all our difficulties to God and lay them at the foot of the cross? And uh, this is what he says to us in response. You are forgiven. The grace of God breaks into our world to give us life. Because of what Jesus has done and God's promise to his people, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have the Bible readings for the day. Our first reading comes from Micah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a case against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Will ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 to 31. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, and we, um, we rise for the gospel, our gospel reading, which is written in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, uh, commonly known as the Beatitudes. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. The disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fulfilled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the, right, is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may. And if there are any young people here who would uh, appreciate a children's address. Come on, guys. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fine getting down. Um, I haven't had these guys out for a while. I thought we'll see see what they're doing. Look at this fellow. Isn't he a nice little fellow? Yeah, he um, he's having a bit of trouble though. He's having a bad day. Have you ever had a bad day? Yep, you've had a bad day. Okay, so you know what this guy's on about. Sometimes he just gets, he's so, uh, gets a bit angry sometimes. Um, so he's obviously not having a good day, is he? Just, how are you going? Yeah, good, okay. Oh, no, he's pushed him a little bit far. He's, he's a little bit aggro, isn't he? Um, do you know people like that? Well, maybe you've been like that sometimes, you know? Sometimes just... Um, Things aren't going well and, you know, you just respond to everything like that. It can be a bad day. Did you see that, Brody? Do you feel like that sometimes? Yeah. 
get a bit frustrated sometimes. Sometimes you just want to go, eh. Yeah. What does this guy need? What do you think he needs? He needs to calm the farm, doesn't he? He needs to calm down. Okay, what if we tell him that? You need to calm down. No, no, he didn't like that. All right. What could be helpful? What, what, what do you need when you get angry? And Yes. Friend. You need a friend. Hmm. He looks like he needs a friend, doesn't he? Let's see if we've got friends for him. What about this guy? This comes to him and says, are you going okay? And when, you know, when people are like that and they just you know, respond like that every time we ask them if they're okay and everything like that, what's the best thing to do? Maybe give them a hug? It could be a little bit dangerous, but uh, it, it could work. You know, sometimes what this, well, what this guy is going to do, he's... You know, he can't think of anything special to do, but he's just going to be with him. He's just going to say, okay, you're feeling a bit sad, a bit aggro. I'm just going to hang around. Because um, lots of other friends will go away. You know, when, you're not, when you're, you're not being very nice, you know, sometimes all your friends, they dis- they're like a dot on the horizon. They're nowhere to be found. Just someone to be close... You know, maybe stand at a little bit of a distance if they're a bit, a bit too aggro, but, but just, to, just to be there. And say, I'm going I'm to be there, I'm going to support you, even though you're a bit... Um, actually, this friend is going to do, he's going to go away. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? He's going to go away, but he's still being a friend... Because he's bringing this guy and this guy. He's going to bring them. And they're going to, they're going to have a little rest for a moment because that was uh, really traumatic, going and bringing all those friends. Um, so he's just going to wake him up. This guy needs a coffee. There we go. Now he's okay. Right. And after a while... You know, they start chatting and after a while this guy goes from that to, if you sort of stop it halfway, it looks like a smile. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to think, we've got to see over here too. So if you, if you go from there to, and you go back a bit, sort of nearly looks like a smile. Do you reckon that looks like a smile? Yeah. We're going to call it a smile anyway. Some people smile, aren't they? isn't all that good anyway so uh, this is this is not too bad so um there we go he's he's happy now because he's got friends who are around him and we can do that do you know what you do when you are a friend to somebody who really needs a friend what do you do what do you reckon you do Yeah, you give them company, you give them comfort, you give them all. Um, it's really good to have friends close to you. Because, see, God is close to each one of us. And he sent Jesus to be our friend. He's our friend with us all the time. And so when you are a friend to somebody else, you kind of take Jesus into their life. It doesn't look all that important what these guys are doing. But what they're doing is really important. Because, see, sometimes we think important things are like, you know, going and making lots of money or, you know, being really famous as a sportsman or a singer or something like that. Sometimes we think those things are important. But you know what God thinks is important? This stuff. Being a friend to somebody who needs a friend. To God, that's the really important stuff. And so when we, when we do this kind of thing, like these teddies are doing, 
we, we're bringing Jesus, we're bringing God's important stuff into the life of somebody who really needs it. I think that's pretty amazing that people like us, people like you and me, you know, might be nothing special. We might not feel special. Some of you guys are, you know, pretty good. I mean, you're pretty cool. But, um, and um, actually, you look cool too. So, but, um, you know, the rest of us try and be as cool as you. But <clears throat> thing is, God says, you are doing really important stuff when you just be a friend to each other. I think that's amazing. Seems like just a little thing, but for God, you're like a, you're like a superstar. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be superstars in people's lives, that we can be a friend to someone who really needs it. Lord, bring us into the presence of those people who are feeling a bit aggro, feeling a bit down, feeling a bit sad. Help us to bring your joy into their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks guys. I think we're going to have a bit of a song now, but I just want to... Yes, we are. Um, actually, this is a really good song. But, uh, but before that, I just want to give you a heads up after the song, we'll be ask, uh, giving a bit of a testimony time. So anyone who has had God working in their lives you've, um, and you'd like to share that with us, um, you know, it might be a bit nerve-wracking to get up the front and say, look, this is what God is doing in my life. So that's why I'm giving you a song to prepare for it, okay? So uh, uh, if, you know, if there's something that you can share with us, then, then please prepare that now. We're going to sing this song.
joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. How's it been going? What's, uh, what's happening in your life? What would you like to share with us? Uh, I like the subtitle there, The Footprints of the Holy Spirit in Your Life. What's God been doing? Go on, no, he's been doing something. Good morning, everybody. Every now and then I find God speaks to you when he's got your eyes wide open. Um, This week he gave me six words, but I actually need to tell you the story. Just work your way back, so make yourself a little bit comfortable. I I left work during the week and I, I work in Toowoomba out at the DPI offices on Tor Street and I was driving over to visit my father in hospital. I'm driving along Tor Street. Anybody will know that Tor Street is a busy street at the best of times. You may or may not know that the bypass has a lane that is actually not working. So there's extra traffic on Tor Street and it was a mess of cars and trucks and everything. And I'm on my phone, hands free, talking to my sister, working out what I needed to do to see my dad when I get to hospital. As I'm driving up the hill in Tor Street, I could see that there's congestion of traffic in front of me. And I could see that the cars were sort of backing up or just sort of congregating and cars moving around a little bit. So I thought, oh, I'm wondering what's going on here. Then the car in front of me moved to get around an obstacle. And there I saw a child running down the road towards my vehicle. And I just swerved to avoid this child. And I said to my sister, there's a child on the road. She said, what? I said, there's a child on the road. So then as I'm driving up the hill, I look in the rear vision mirror and I see this child running down the four lanes of traffic and two semi-trailers coming up the hill. So I said to my, my sister, Sorry, I've got to go. Father, forgive me, for I've sinned. I did a U-turn across four lanes of traffic, including double white lines. <laughs> All I can say is, well done. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'm driving down the hill now, driving in the direction that the child's running. And as I get to him, I'm trying to get his attention. Then I could see him better. This child has a disability. He has autism and he's just running down the road. I tried to get his attention, but I don't get it. He just looks at me and runs behind my vehicle. So I go forward and get my car off the road. So I start running up the hill towards him. That's when I saw another driver. He pulled up in the middle of the highway. He stops, puts his his hazard lights on. He gets out of the car and he walks over to the child and gently, just very gently, just puts his arms out and shepherds the boy over to the side of the road where I'm running up, where I could then take him. And I say to the gentleman, uh, maybe you should get, you get your car out of the traffic, then come and give me a hand. And he did that and he comes over to me and we're trying to work out where this boy comes from. In amongst all of that, what we hadn't noticed was the woman running down the hill towards him. And so uh, mum arrived and we were able to take the child back home. I tell you, after that, in my mind, all I could see was this shot in my rear vision mirror still of this young child just running down traffic and two trucks coming towards him. And then this man who just stops in the traffic usher him to safety that's when the six words come came to me this happens every day at peace this happens every day at peace 
Our church's mission is very clear to young families, the elderly and people with a disability. Every day we have staff across those organisations who look after elderly people and make sure that their homes and everything are right and that they're safe. Every day we have staff who look after young children and help shepherd them in a life where they can be safe and they can stay and they can grow and they can develop. Every day we have staff who look after people with disabilities, look out for them and make sure that they stay safe. Our church is an absolute blessing that God has brought to us and sometimes we may take it for granted but every day this happens. After, you know, you might think that story is rather shocking and some of you may be still thinking, what about all those other drivers who kept driving past the child? I wouldn't dwell on that. I don't think that's a good question because the two of us who did stop, we drove past him. It was shocking. You stunned. You don't know what to think. I've got a better question, which is, who was the person who stopped in the middle of the traffic? And I can answer that one, because afterwards we were exchanging our personal details so that we could sort of follow up and so on. So we exchanged our personal details. I gave the gentleman my name and my phone number, and he looked at me. He said, are you a teacher? Because I'm a teacher. That's, who's, that's the sort of person who sees the person in need in the middle of a road, sees a young child and turns around and stops to help them and shepherd them to safety. And they're the people we're installing today, Pastor Rob. Thanks, Neil. That's a yeah, very poignant story for today. I think, yeah. Worth a clap. Um, actually, just before I hand over to you, Jan, the, stay there. Um, the, uh, the picture in my mind was, you know, a child running up, you would think that the best thing to do would be like a spear tackle thing, you know, where you just grab the kid and... But obviously that wouldn't have been the go. This teacher knew what to do and just gently held out his hand and ushered the kid to safety. I think that's, um, yeah, just switched on to, to the right thing. Thanks, Jen. I think it's in their DNA, Pastor Rob. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a long story, this is a very short story. This is a praise God moment because I'm so glad to see Lorraine in church today with us. God bless you, Lorraine. Bless you, Lorraine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You want to say something too? Well, there's a first time for everything, isn't there? Uh, when our house burnt down, I didn't even worry because I knew the Lord had a plan for me and Ron. And we were, I was looked after my sister for 18 months and him. And I knew that he was taking care of us all. And even when I had cancer, it doesn't worry me because I, he, he's helping me every day and I am very thankful for that. Thank you. Thanks for that. That's very much like those teddies around. There were people around. Even when you were feeling a bit... Uh, <laughs> Lorraine, come on. you've got to come all the way up. That's it. This is another Lorraine. I just would like to tell you that I thank God for the last two years of my cancer journey. So I'm still here. I'm ready to work for God, but I've got a few tests coming up this week. So I hope he hopes that it's, I hope that it's not too serious. So I can continue anyway. Yeah. Thanks, Lorraine. Any other Lorraines? Okay, that being the... Yes, it's message time. I'll just turn that off so it's out of the way. I 
for grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, these readings today are readings of upside downness. You know, the strong and the weak and the wise and the unwise and all of that kind of thing. You saw that in those readings, those readings before. Um, and so, see, everything that we do, a bit like Neil was um, hinting at, everything that we do here is, uh, is based on sharing our faith. Everything that we do as a church, well, should be anyway, uh, have one central purpose. We want to, well, not so much share our faith, it's actually, that's not quite right. That's, um, if you want to listen to what Jesus said, he said that we are to make disciples, not just tell people about Jesus, it's about making disciples. So that's our, it should in, anyway be our central goal and everything that we do should be around that. And we need to be continually called back to that central goal. Um, and this is, uh, this is, I guess, what Paul is doing here, calling people back to the central goal. But it's a little bit... He, he goes and complicates the issue with this upside-down talking. So we've got to wrestle with that a little bit. He says, We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. So we're, we're putting a stumbling block and foolishness out there. That's our, that's our message. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So that's why we're talking about this whole upside down, back to front Christian message. You know, when we are weak, we are strong. Uh, giving a, a message out there that, that may come rather than as a, as a convincing message, it comes across as a stumbling block. Uh, how, how do we do this? And... Um, See, in, in wrestling with this, I think there's two things that go on here. It, there's this one from Paul, this reading from Paul about, you know, Jews and Greeks, foolishness is wiser, wiser than human wisdom and all of that kind of thing. And then there's one from Matthew, uh, the reading from Matthew, which is the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the weak, uh, blessed are the poor, um, those kinds of things. So it's this also upside downness and and those both of these readings come at it from a slightly different angle firstly paul is saying that we we march to a beat of a different drum i think if we if we look at it this way it it helps us to understand because we've been taken out of human wisdom we've been taken out of the normal worldly way of operating and placed in a new way of operating we've been given a new path and we have to work out how to do that it's like when they upgrade your computer system you know you're taken out of the old you know windows 98 which you were quite comfortable with and worked perfectly well and you put into windows 10 and now it's windows 11 and you've got to completely work out what you're doing all over again some of you are nodding you know saying yeah, and some of you are saying you're really old with Windows 98 and some of you are going, what on earth is he talking about? But look, if I see if I throw a few different examples at you, it's, you know, some of it's going to hit some people everywhere and um, eventually we'll get there. Uh, maybe some of you will identify better with the marching to a different drum. You know, we do that as Christians, don't we? we? Paul calls us to not focus on the wisdom of the world so much, but focus on the wisdom from above. It's a different wisdom. 
different things are valuable. In God's economy, you are of highest value. You know, we don't see that in the wisdom of the world. In the wisdom of the world, you have to earn your value. You have to somehow find a place of value. And even if you have been valuable all your life, if you trip and stumble, if you uh, come unstuck somewhere, then your value is gone and you can be ignored or these days cancelled. You're no longer of any value, of any interest to people and so you can be sidelined. God doesn't treat you like that. God says you are of central and of primary value. That's the wisdom, that's God's wisdom. Wisdom of the world says you are not so valuable, you've got to earn your value. God says you are of primary value and I'm going to seek you out and I'm going to try and bring you to me somehow. And so we march to the beat of a different drum. Matthew, he kind of has another reason uh, when, he, when he's sharing with us uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and those Beatitudes. It's, uh, you know, what's that about? And what I can see in there is that it's about security. You don't have to, you know, if you're secure in who you are, you don't have to fight for who you are. If you're secure in your position, then you don't have to seek a way to be accepted. You don't have to earn a place in God's economy because he says you're, you're already there. And so blessed are the poor, well, you don't have to strive for riches because God already values you. You know, so often our, our striving, our working is based on wanting to get something better and it's comparable to what that guy's got over there. You know, certainly in Australia today, our our evaluation of whether you're rich or poor is very much to do with the guy down the street or the guy on the TV or the guy on the papers. Uh, we, don't, we don't have the situation in Australia where, um, where there is not enough food to go around, where there's not enough money for anyone to survive. I mean, you know, yes, there, we, we know that there are people who struggle, but it's usually for extraneous circumstances which drag them down rather than the, the lack of uh, sufficient wealth in this nation to be able to support anyone. It's, it's, which means we've got to approach the problem in a slightly different way. So, uh, but if you're secure in where you are, you know, like if you're in a, um, if you're struggling in floodwaters, which they seem to be in New Zealand now. It gets around a bit, doesn't it? But if you're struggling in floodwaters um, and you know, you've got to fight for your survival, but if somebody comes and grabs you by the scruff of the neck and pulls you up into a, a lifeboat, and it, it may be just a little dinghy, it may not be all that comfortable, but you no longer have to fight. You're secure. Your, your safety is certain. You know, if there, there may be more subtle ways you're struggling, maybe, maybe you feel you need to struggle for, um, for social standing. You know, particularly young people find it very difficult to, to find their way through school because, you know, some people aren't up with the cool kids or whatever we struggle through. We have to fight for social standing. But if you know that you're the coolest kid on the block, if you know that you're good at stuff, if you know that you know, you're capable and successful, then you're secure. God says that you are cool. God says that you are lovable. 
God, says, God looks at you and he sees number one. God values you more than anything else around. We can see that. We see the, the value that he's placed on you. He sent Jesus into the world to die for you. He sent him into the world to explain to you just how much God loves you. See, if you know that, you don't have to strive for social standing because you are a king's kid. You're number one in God's eyes. And so that affects the way that we treat other people too. You see, if you're secure in where you stand, if you... If you know who you are and if you know you're strong, if you know that you're acceptable in God's eyes, you know that you're secure in who you are, then you can afford to give ground. You can afford to... You don't have to defend yourself in an argument. You don't have to win all the time. You don't have to um, be right all the time. See how it works? By the world standard, that's stupid. By the world standard, you should stand up for yourself and defend yourself. Fight back. You know, take the ground. God says, no, it's already yours anyway. You've won. Everything is yours. Everything that I have is yours. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're precious to me. Everything is yours. You don't have to fight for what you've got. You, know, you don't have to fight for what you need because I'm going to care for you. See how it's upside down. It's, it's back to front. It, it operates from a different, different way. <clears throat> you know, Paul's, just in that reading from Paul, we march to the beat of a different drum. It's, we, we're not a part of this world we're just passing through. Our home is somewhere else. Uh, we're, we're not, our security isn't dependent on the way this world works. <clears throat> our success is not dependent on our outward appearance, wealth, or stature. And the Beatitudes, you're secure, you already have everything. You can afford to give ground. You don't have to defend yourself. You have already won. This is the upside downness which we try to... This is becoming a disciple. This is, this is what um, being and becoming a disciple is. It's discovering our place in the kingdom. Discovering who we are, discovering our stature, discovering our status in God's way of looking at things. That's becoming a disciple. And so as we live as disciples, what we, what we do here, you know, we're going to install some staff and, and bless the, the staff as they, uh, um, as they are equipped and, and called to work in our school specifically uh, to bring this way of discipleship into the world of, of kids. And so we need to think, don't we? How, how, am, I, how am I equipped for this service? And the reason we start here, the reason it's so important to have this time of blessing, this time of installation and prayer here in God's house, here together as God's people worshipping him. You know, par partially it's support. It's saying, look, we're backing you in this, in this ministry. But also it's because we recognise that we can only fully do this in God's strength. How does Jesus equip us? This is... And, and when I was thinking about this, you know, the Jesus we're talking about, it's this guy, this guy in, in Mark chapter 7, 
When Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis, there some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears and then he spit and touched the man's tongue. And he looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said, Ephata, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. This is the guy we're talking about. This is, this is how it happens. If Jesus can make a deaf man speak, no, a deaf man hear and a mute speak, surely he can do a little with us. This is the equipping that we're talking about. Yes, there's all the education, the learning, the equipping that, that goes on, that, that feeds into our craft. But the central thing is the wisdom that comes from God, the blessing and the empowerment that God feeds into your life. That's what we're going to use. That's what we're going to depend on. That's what we're going to rest on. And that's, that's the, the equipping, that's the discipleship we want to bring to our kids as they discover who Jesus is and how we try and get this upside down way of looking at things uh, in a reasonable way so that they can grasp it and understand it and so we come to be equipped we come to be blessed we come longing for what comes from God so that we can do our job better so that we can do our job in a God-pleasing way. I pray, that, um, I pray that somewhere in all of that, there's something for you. That maybe you feel the need to be more secure. You, you want to you wanna hear those Beatitudes speak to you, not just words on a page, but you want them to speak to you. You want to feel secure and, and like a winner in your own life. You, you hear the words of Jesus that says, you, you already are secure so you can afford to give ground. Maybe, maybe that's you. Maybe you need to experience that a little more. I hope you can find that here this morning. Maybe you find it difficult to speak and you want, want Jesus to open your mouth and to open your ears. I pray that you can find that here this morning. Maybe you need to march to a different drum. You know, maybe, maybe your life is completely dictated by outside forces, the forces of this world. And you feel a little bit pushed from pillar to post. Maybe you need to switch lanes and march to a different drum. Maybe that, I pray that you can find that here this morning. That God can, can lift you out of the prison of following the dictates of this world and give you the freedom of following him. May you find that peace here this morning. Um, as we sing our next song, I want to offer a prayer. Now, I know this uh, may be difficult because I've got to come back here and, and lead some other prayer. But, uh, but look, if, you're, if you would like prayer for any of those things, if you want that release, that, uh, uh, that different drum that you would like to be marching to, if you want God to speak into your life, and to open things up. Then I'm going to stand over there and I'd ask that you come forward for prayer. But remember, the song is only a certain length. So if that's your desire, then do it in the first verse, not in the last. Uh, give us a chance to pray for you. During this, your offerings will be received.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you give us, life and health and all that we need. Help us to live gratefully and productively, sharing what we have with others. Amen. And I'd ask that, uh, that the staff, actually the new staff, we want the installation first, so, uh, so any of the new ones, and um, uh, you know who you are, Mark has sent you an email, um, and so we should have about eight, I think, just right front, we know who you are. Um, See, we had to give that little reminder because some of them have been here two years because uh, we missed out that installation last year. Uh, I went and turned it. Oh, there we go. All done. Pastor Rob, I present to you Kayla Turnbull, Beck Mueller, Amanda Asaki, Vanessa Page, Karen Huth, Jody Hauser, Michelle Breezy, and Mel Rose, who have been appointed to serve as teachers and staff of Peace Lutheran Primary School. Friends in Christ, St. Peter says, Each one of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very word of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So Kayla, Beck, Amanda, Vanessa, Karen, Ray, Jody, Michelle and Mel... You have been appointed as teachers and staff to serve at Peace Lutheran Primary School. You are required to teach and act in accordance with God's word as confessed by the Lutheran Church. Do you intend to carry out your duties faithfully? If so, say yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, Kayla, Beck, Amanda, Vanessa, Karen, Ray, Jody, Michelle and Mel. I install you as members of staff at Peace Lutheran Primary School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Notice I say members of staff, not just teachers, because they're all, there's, uh, there's teachers and teacher aides and um, pastoral care. So, so it's an all-encompassing thing. It's great to have so many uh, new staff of all uh, descriptions here this morning. Um, now, members of Peace Community, see, we haven't finished yet. Members of Peace Community, you have responsibility too. I ask that you receive our new staff, pray for them, honour and support them, and work peacefully together with them. It doesn't ask me to say this, but do you intend to do this? If so, everybody say, yes, I do. That's good. Okay. Um, would you like to all just turn around and we can receive you with applause? Just want to uh, reassure you that God has placed you right, right where He needs you, and uh, to reassure you not only of my ongoing support and prayers, but the prayers of all of our staff, but the prayers of our whole peace community as well, especially the peace congregation. And so this morning, I just greet you all with the words from Psalm 105, verse 4, which is uh, one of my favourites, which says, Look to the Lord and His strength and seek His face always. So God bless you today, tomorrow, and always.
Could you face this way again and we'll pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since you have called us to serve each other with gifts that we receive from you, equip Kayla, Beck, Amanda, Vanessa, Karen, Ray, Jody, Michelle and Mel with the gifts of your Holy Spirit so that this community may be built up as it honours and serves you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now God the Father give you his Holy Spirit to work in you and support you so that you may serve our Lord Jesus Christ faithfully. Amen. I'd ask that uh, you guys can stay here and I'd ask that you be joined by the rest of your uh, cohort of um, colleagues. That's it? Yes. rest of the staff, that's you. Come forward. Half the church comes forward. There's a lot of people involved, aren't there? And actually, if we, if we called the rest of the people who supported the school in some way, uh, you know, there'd be an enormous group here. But um, anyway, this is big enough. <laughs> But uh, so, so just, just, we're just talking daily staff and, and, uh, and they're still not all here. But um, uh, this great cohort of, of saints together around the throne, almost, um, let's pray. Gracious God, as you have blessed our community in the past, we ask that you continue to bless our staff so that we may work with you for our school, church and community. Help our staff in their various roles to make peace a place of sound learning, new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom and grant that those who teach may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so I bless you as teachers and staff at Peace Lutheran Primary School. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May each of you find joy in your work as you seek to grow in grace and service, as you guide young people to know their Lord better and to find their way in life, and as you discover more fully the call of Christ on your life. Amen. Staff, I would like you to turn and face uh, your supportive community there or certainly representatives of the supportive community, because it goes a little wider than this as well. Uh, but we're going to bless you with this song. So sing up big, guys, all right?
Thank you. You may return to your seats, and, and while they're doing that, we might as well give them a, give them a hand. The prayer of the church is, is that time where we bring the needs of the community to our Lord in prayer. Uh, I want to do that slightly differently this morning, seeing our community is really represented here this morning. Uh, so let, let me pray for you and let the healing continue. We we began to pray a little bit for, for God's intervention in the lives of people and, and you know, we had a couple of people come up but there's so much more. To, um, that's uh, me just dropping out for some reason. Don't worry about that. We, uh, we know what's going on and we're not concerned about it. Um, so just uh, let me pray. I, I want to pray for people here for healing uh, but also people in our community who need a touch of God on their life. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a healing God, that you are a loving God, uh, and that your, uh, your love is poured out to us in Jesus. Lord, send us your Holy Spirit that your healing power may fall upon us. Uh, there, are, there are people here this morning who have asked for your intervention in their lives, and we pray that you give that. Uh, there are people here this morning uh, who need your um, intervention and haven't put it into words yet. We pray that you hear the, the, uh, the needs of their heart, the cry of their, their heart and the needs in their life, uh, that you may bring uh, healing into their lives and bring a fresh start and renewal. We pray for those who are uh, seeking further treatment for cancer. Uh, let, let, uh, let your healing hand rest upon them that, uh, that any treatment that occurs through experts, through doctors, is doubled in its effectiveness, uh, that, that it brings about real and lasting change in their lives. We thank you for the healing so far, and we ask that it continues. We pray for those who haven't come here this morning because they're too sick. Uh, we pray that you would uh, raise them up onto their feet and strengthen their legs um, give them new energy that they may experience you in their lives. We pray for those who are depressed this morning, those who, who are, are needing uh, a deeper comfort, a comfort of their spirit. We ask that you send your healing hand upon them. Uh, and those people sitting at home in their lounge rooms this morning that, uh, that are experiencing that, that that darkness of depression. Let your light shine through, Lord. Let them experience a shining of your light on their life right now, that they may experience a touch of joy, just a touch of joy so that they know it's still there. That even though they're in the depths of depression, they can see a glimmer of hope and they know that your joy still exists, that they can still experience it, that you will still give it to them and that they can uh, open their eyes with new hope and new life. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who are feeling a little bit lost this morning, those who are finding it difficult uh, to find direction in life, uh, particularly young people this morning who have, um, have been struggling a little bit with their future. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would speak into their lives, that you would give them the solidness, the solidness of your word, that they would know that you are there each step of the way for them. Let the solidness of your word be a strong foundation upon which they can stand. And we know that, that today there are so many pressures on young people to perform in a certain way and to uh, express themselves in a certain way. And we, we reject that now in the name of Jesus because they are declared holy, they are declared worthy in the name of Jesus. They, and... Lord, you won them as your own. And so we push aside any outside influence on behalf of these young people and we pray that they would find their way in you, that you have declared them worthy, you have uh, uh, made a way for them, you have declared them victorious. 
and they are right in you and they don't have to prove themselves to the, their friends, they don't have to prove themselves to the world, they don't have to prove themselves to anyone. Uh, they, they only need to give glory to you and their way is secure. So help them to discover that security, that they may know you are Lord, and that they may know that, you, that they have a life in you and it is more abundant than they could find anywhere else. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for our peace community. We pray that that, that word may be spoken in the whole community here in Gatton, that peace may go out from us, and that all people here may experience peace through us. Lord, these things and many others that we need, we pray in the name of Jesus. And we join together in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive. just suffered a flat battery what are we doing now are we doing a song <clears throat> there's something oh blessing yes <laughs> yeah we don't always know what we're doing but when we do we can bless people may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to finish with our final song now, which is uh, in this together. We're all in this together. Uh, we're just uh, a few upcoming things. Do we have any announcements? I don't. I think we may have one or two. I know there's a, a next week. Ropley are having their hundredth anniversary um, of their church. That's that will be there. So if you, uh, just a reminder, if you want to get a, a lift out there, you've got to be here at nine o'clock, and there will be a bus going out there. Or you can go out there under your own steam and if you get there at 8.30, uh, then you get a cup of coffee and a bit of a snack before the, the service starts. So that sounds advantageous there. I won't be going because I'll be here uh, leading services as normal. Um, 
back to the 8 a.m. and 10 time slots. Uh, the accommodation, I think, is that's been fixed, uh, so I don't think we need that. Wolf would like. Pastor Rob, I'm assuming that people can come to the 8 o'clock service and uh, things may finish in time, maybe, for them to. Yes. We might, we might try to help people with logistics, so maybe. Okay. With the, if you want to come along to the 8 a.m. service next week. And then hop on the bus at 9. And then hop on the bus at 9. We will facilitate that for you. I will have a much shorter sermon. And Do I ask for a show of hands, Rob? Or, yeah. um... <laughs> there, there, were, there was no applause there. There was... <laughs> Wolf. Morning, everyone. It's good to finish on that country and western note there. <laughs> Just something for the congregation and anyone who's interested as well. We run a prayer group here on Thursdays from 1.30 to roughly 2.30, goes till 3. Um, every Thursday, we're, and we're starting again on the 2nd of, of February, just so everyone's aware of that. And you're more than welcome to come along. It's a daytime one, yes, but it was geared up for those folk who don't work and also parents who were dropping kids off at school and things like that. Um, there was one of a night time, but I don't know if that's still going, but it may start up again. So, uh, And I encourage you to come along um, to that. Um, I believe prayer is the engine house of any church and congregation as it is, and all you folk here have been prayed for at some time or another by us. Um, the school definitely gets prayed about quite regularly. You're in our hearts and in our prayers constantly and I encourage anyone who doesn't come along to tick off your list who you're um, praying each night when, and include the school and all the areas of um, Peace Congregation's mission work. We also pray for the whole outside world as well. It's not just about locally. We pray for individuals and there's a box out the back you can put your prayer request in and we'll look at that or you can come and see me or Pastor Rob and and we'll pray for you individually, however. Um, you may need us to, um, and you're welcome to do that any time. But for yourselves, I would encourage you in your own prayer life to think of things outside your family, things outside the happening, and petition the Lord for all these things, because he asks us to. He asks us to put these things into his hands, um, and often we can't carry these things ourselves anyway. Our shoulders are nowhere near as big as the Lord's and he's more than happy to do so for us. So I would encourage you in that. The other thing I, I'd like to bring up if I could, peacemakers will be staying in this year, but we are in need of somebody to run the activities. Um, we had Lester doing it and Lester did a great job um, and he's got an opportunity now as a principal at a school and so we need someone in this first term to take that role on. Uh, I'm getting a bit long in the tooth and, and my energy runs out really quickly these days. Um, so Lester was great to have around and there's a whole support team that back people up in this. So if you have a, a, a heart for children's ministry in the primary school age group and you would like to be involved and you would like to do that, please come and see me or Pastor Rob sometime. That would be great. Thanks, Wolf. Yes, that's well worthy of an applause and uh, it's fantastic that uh, both those things, that the prayer ministry and, the, and peacemakers, but uh, let's, let's also get that prayer ministry happening. I want, I, I've just printed my new prayer book for this year. So that's where, like we've got updated names in there. I, and so that I've, I run through, everyone gets a go uh, for being prayed for. There's 421 names in that book now. Um, and so what I will do is to produce a prayer book that, that I can hand out that people can take home. Like it won't have the names because there are privacy issues there, but um, uh, there'll be gaps where you can write names and, and uh, some other topics and things. So, so watch for that in the next few months. Uh, we'll be producing a prayer book so that you can have a bit of a planned prayer ministry at, uh, at home or wherever you are in your groups, whatever. Pastor Rob, I just had a few quick announcements handed to me before the service. The Ladies Guild meeting this Wednesday in the hall at 9am. That's the 1st of February. It's okay, Ladies Guild Wednesday, 9am. 
Uh, the, the first street stall for the year will be in front of IGA at 8am, but that's in March, March 16th. And uh, actually both of those days are family birthdays for me, so I shouldn't forget either of those, but, uh, but I am getting old. Uh, the, the final thing is there is an elders meeting tonight. Yes. At what time, Pastor Rob? Seven. It's at 7pm, okay, for the elders. In the meeting room. Yep, that's, that's it from me. Great. Then let's uh, uh, join together a cup of coffee afterwards. Uh, that's all set, ready to go. Uh, please join in and um, hang around and chat. It's great to catch up.